Okay, here we go. We got everything cleaned off and we got our temperature set. And we're gonna see if we can't pop that chip off without causing any frickin' damage. Welcome back everybody. Today we are going to be working on an iPhone 7 that has searching no service. And this searching no service happened after a successful audio IC repair. Uh, so the suspicion is that we got a little too much heat under baseband and now we have no modem firmware and we have no IMEI and we've got the exclamation point saying no service up in the corner. So I've already got this prepped, I've poked a bunch of lines, I've checked out a whole bunch of stuff and uh, I'm pretty sure this is my final, final shot to get this guy working is to uh, reball this and identify whether or not the fault is in the chip or someplace else. So, since we're prepped, let's get under the scope and let's start clearing away this underfill. Whew, my goodness, this stuff sucks. This underfill is garbage. Why do you do this, Apple? I just want to replace baseband with a donor. We got the chip cleaned out really good all the way around it. And I cleared away from this inductor right in here. Uh, Cause I'm gonna pull him off the board, set him aside and use that big gap uh, to shove a tool under. So let's get him off. Okay, here we go. We got everything cleaned off and we got our temperature set. And we're gonna see if we can't pop that chip off without causing any frickin' damage. Boy, how am I gonna get in there? This is gonna be a friggin' hard one. Can I go this angle? Okay, maybe I can do that. And then come under here. I am gonna take the heat off and wait just a minute. I got the chip started, but I don't want to overheat and cause other problems. So we're gonna pause for a couple minutes. God dang it. All right, so there you have it. We got the chip off. Uh, we do have a couple of missing pads. Uh, we'll check those out. Um, they are most likely NC, uh, but we will check them out to be sure. So let's look at our line down here now, NC. So this is the line, I didn't film it, but during my testing, these were coming up really bad. And that did not change the readings. Oh, shucks. I am just gonna very quickly take off uh, the PMD 9645. If I just frickin' did all that baseband garbage for nothing, I am gonna be pissed. <sighs> yeah. 
Yep, yep, yep. If this was the frickin' problem, we will have learned something. Alright, so let's grab a new PMD 9645. Be right back. I was gonna reball, but I'm gonna use a brand new chip instead. Brand new, baby. Straight from the magical land of China. Boy, look at these fancy tweezers. Those are some tight tips. Okay, we're gonna let it cool down. We're gonna check that line again. If that was the problem all along. Oh man, I'm gonna be irritated. Cause I have got a lot of time into this guy trying to figure out why it has searching no service with the exclamation point and everything was pointing towards baseband. And I took the risk of ripping that guy off. And now I gotta try to put it back on and clean all the underfill still out of the way. All right, that feels cool enough. Let's go back under and check. All right, that is, that's our line in question. It has been giving us funky readings this whole time. So there is our guy. And now I'm getting OL. because it's obviously an open line. God dang it, I'm telling you, I think I think that was my problem. Oh, what a nightmare. What a freaking nightmare. Let's get this loaded back up and let's finish cleaning it and put it all back together. I don't know what is going on with each of these pads. It looks like I literally have to scrape this oxidation off of every one that looks dark because I can't seem to get them to take solder. What a pain in my behind. Well, this is a lot of film, so I am just going to cut and put the cameras back on when I get this guy uh, rebald and ready. All right, I figured it would be uh, worth turning on here for the first reball attempt. So I think I got that chip cleaned up enough. Okay, here we go. Well, that kind of looked okay. Let's see what it looks like under. Wow, look at that. I would say that actually came out all right. I have one ball that looks like he didn't sit down right. Uh, but I can take care of that. That's no problem. I guess, oh, there's two. Okay, so first let's reflow these so that we can kind of watch them go get to where they need to be and all that fun stuff. Okay, so checking it over, I got three. Uh, those three dots down on the bottom there. So we are gonna see if we can't figure out <laughs> how to, if we can do something with this. Is my tip gonna, you know, I wonder what those particular pads do. 
Let's identify him. All right, so we are working right down here. And let's see. So that one is ground. That's one of them that's missing. And then one, two, three, four, fifth one down. One, two, three, four, fifth one down is also a ground. He is an NC. So I'm actually going to leave those. I'm not even going to try to screw with them because there are two grounds and an NC on the board. All right, so we got this guy ready. Let's go back to our microscope and let's check out. Okay, I'm not gonna get too crazy. I think this looks real good. My chip looks real good. Oh, hang on a sec. I got the chip placed, and I'm going to add a tiny little bit more flux. I'm going to shield the processor, and I'm going to come in and give it a tiny nudge from right here when it's ready. So here we go. Dang, I feel like I got Alzheimer's. Okay, Ooh, we got a little nudge. Alright, get that heat sink out of there, and oh, let's look for any balls squirting out of the processor. Make sure I didn't get that too hot. I think we did a good job. Feeling real good about it. Really good about it. Let's put that inductor back on while it's still warm. Ah, dang, I got Alzheimer's. <laughs> uh, Alzheimer's, no, it's not Alzheimer's, it's Parkinson's. God dang, I can't hold anything steady. Okay, well I got it to I got it to stick. Let me just use a little hot air to let that guy go home. My god, I'm shaking. It is the end of the day. He looks good. We're gonna let him cool and we're gonna test this line in diode mode. And I'm getting a much greater uh, resistance to ground. I was getting like 40, 46 or something. Uh, I am now getting, I'm now getting more than that. Let me check. I'm getting a 0 0.02, or excuse me, I'm getting a 0.213 uh, for diode readings now. I was getting like a 0 0.08 or something really ridiculously low. So um, if I were to speculate anything, um, my problem the whole time was the Qualcomm PMD 9645. Um, it's really unfortunate that I took the time uh, to do uh, the baseband when I probably didn't need to. I really risked a lot, but it was because I was convinced that that guy was good. So we're going to switch over to our hands. We'll grab the housing and let's plug it in and see if this thing is still going to come alive. All right, we connected the battery and we do not have any smoke. Oh my God, we have an Apple logo. This is fantastic. We got our first flash and look at that. We got a fast boot. We still see searching, we still don't have IMEI and we still have a cellular update failed. No modem firmware still. So what's interesting is, let me go to uh, easy draw. So here's what I've learned so far. Originally, uh, this had audio IC problems. So uh, audio IC was repaired, uh, added the C12 jumper. We had a fast boot, um, everything looked good. After a few minutes of testing, uh, the phone boot looped a couple times and uh, then it went to the no service bar, which I don't know if it's make outable, uh, but right up here, We've got a, uh, it's an exclamation point and then a no service. So uh, yeah, I don't have the SIM card in it. 
um, but I know that it's not going to work even with the SIM card uh, because I also have no uh, modem firmware. I guess I should hold this this way. Um, no modem firmware. I have the IMEI here, but that doesn't that doesn't really matter. So the same problem, even though I've done a lot of work on this, the same exact symptoms are there. So after replacing, I did U3101 first and added the C12 jumper and we're back to life. I had a very, very partial, well, it was a almost short to ground right here on the 1V0 LDL line. Because there was only one place under here, I chose to take off, and because there was no reason for suspicion, I chose to take off baseband itself and reball it. Oh, you know what? I think this pretty much tells me that the problem is internal to baseband. I'm gonna I'm gonna poke around some more lines. Let me I'm just gonna explore this phone real fast. We have a short on this inductor uh, right here. He is straight up to ground. I'm pretty sure I checked him prior and he was not shorted. So let's see what he is. Okay, so I either have a problem on under this guy or I have a problem under this guy. Uh, well, god dang it. This guy is easy enough to get off. I think I'm gonna do the baseband uh, PMU first. So let's take this guy back off and check that line again. You know, I got a sneaky suspicion <laughs> that I have it under here. You know what? I've done this one once. Let's let's take it back off. We'll check it. We'll and um, um, gosh dang, that one's such a hard one to put back on. Oh well, let's do it. No, that guy is still shorted. <laughs> this sucks. This is the worst form of suck. Do I got anything bridged? So I guess we're now gonna take off this guy. Let's check that line. And it's not shorted. So, my goodness, what are the odds of that? All right, that guy's back on. Let's check that line. Okay, so it is not shorted to ground anymore. So evidently I did have something wrong with this guy uh, because one, I mean, that was beeping to ground. Uh, now it's not, so we are going to set our, our baseband chip back on exactly the same way we just did the last one. Uh, because we just lifted it, it has brand new balls. Let's make sure nothing's butchered on the other side. Okay, we got that guy back on. So the line is shorted again as soon as I put that chip on. So let's take it right back off, and we will test uh, the chip directly, I guess. That doesn't make sense that when I took off the other chip, last time is what cured the beeping. But I had normal diode readings before I put this one back on, and my diode readings now are showing me shorted to ground, getting 0 0.03. So the short, uh, the short has to be internal to baseband. So just for scientific exploration, I'm gonna take off baseband one more time. And let's check that line again. I'm getting normal diode readings. Okay, so if I have normal diode readings, then let's find, uh, let's find out what the hell's going on and determine if it is happening on the inside of this chip. So, we are going to figure this out. Okay, so A1 is there, 
There it is. I found it. So it's pin. It's one, two, three, four, uh, five up, eight over. So five up, eight over is one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That guy right there is shorted internally to the chip. Um, well, hey, at least we know uh, what's going on with this thing. And, geez, hey, we learned. Uh, this is obviously a repair that we cannot fix uh, because the baseband chip is unique to the iPhone 7 and therefore cannot be replaced. So we have a successful failure and want to say thank you everybody for sticking around um, this was a, a good repair a good learning experience and we will see you on the next repair thanks for watching all right we got it put together let's see the boot. Oh, dang we got Apple logo Dang, look oh, at that. Look. So even without even without baseband, I see on this boots and I, that was a fast boot. Uh, that was I would say a, a normal healthy boot, very short. Um, so that chip is not needed for boot. We know that now.